Well, welcome everybody to FSU Coach Live. It's 2023, a new year and new interviews. And I'm really excited to have Gunnar Gartner joining us. He is a football coach. He has graduated our master's program. So I got to know him a little bit. And Gunnar, you've been on this show before, but it was a while back when you were in high school. And so I'm really curious to learn a little bit about your experiences since your transition into college uh, coaching. And uh, let's just start with a little bit of background. Tell people who you are. All right. Yes, sir. Well, first of all, thanks again for having me on the show. Uh, sure. I'm truly honored to be here. Uh, you know, like you said, the last time I was on here, it was a little over a year ago, and I was just a high school coach. But so much has transpired since then. Um, I just, like you said, I just graduated from the master's program. But I also was, I had that great opportunity and the privilege, really, to be an assistant with Troy University football. And that was just a great opportunity. But uh, so, like I said, I, I started out, I coached for seven years at the high school level, uh, the middle school level, and really K through five. And so then I was just now at the collegiate level. And so it's, like I said, it's been a whirlwind. <laughs> All right, let me, let me ask you this. A lot of people don't know that, that when you were young, you went through a severe injury, which yes. really affected your whole life. Talk a little bit about that and then and then how that affected you, given the fact you can't compete like other other kids could. You couldn't go pro, so to speak, like every kid wants to do it. How do you how do you overcome that where you have athletes who who maybe look at you and go, well, you can't do what I can do? Well, that's a great question. And um, I'm glad you brought that up. I, I try to be modest about that, but uh Back in 2013, when I was just a junior in high school, I had a bad accident. Um, I'm from Panama City Beach, Florida, and just one day I just decided to go to the beach just to just to have fun, just to uh, enjoy the sand, the sun, the typical beach stuff. But uh, I actually was run over, uh, physically run over um, from my toes all the way up my legs and my back and over my head with a Ford Bronco. He was a beach service worker hauling a jet ski. Um, I was very fortunate to be able to walk away from that with just a, a, a small fracture in my L3 vertebrae, um, a torn meniscus in my right knee, which never fully healed back, and just concu concussive-like symptoms. And I still have a scar, but uh, that's really the only thing I was able to walk away with. Um, and like I said, like you said, that happened when I was in high school. So not only could I get and go pro, I couldn't even play at the collegiate level. And there is honestly – probably for about a year, two years, really, I was in a dark place. I, I was really frustrated with how things played out. I, I just was upset that I had to stay home and go to the community college just so I could finish physical therapy. And, but one day I just, I realized that, you know what, I have a platform to use this as an opportunity to, I was a substitute teacher at the time. And I realized, well, I can tell these students that you have one direction that you can go in that's beneficial and you can prosper or it can go in the other direction and dwell like I did. And I just, I was tired of dwelling and I just wanted to do something pro proactive and productive. And so that really guided me to be, become an educator and to help young men and women and to show them that, listen, I had a bad experience where I couldn't do much, but I, I realized, you know what, you can either grow from this and overcome it or you can't. And so one thing that this year, especially I learned that I have a lot of these college athletes that are playing at such a high level that they, uh, you know, their college athletes are playing football and a lot of them have aspirations to go pro. And there's a lot of times where like, I'll talk to them that guys that are injured, I'll set them to the side and just tell them, you know, listen, you have an opportunity to let this set that become a comeback and you can grow from this. And they have an opportunity to do something that I couldn't do. And they realize that. And it's been really beneficial for me. And, and I'm just really blessed to be able to be in this opportunity. And my calling is just to help these young men and women. Do you feel that athletes at times, though, look at you and question your validity as a coach, given that you don't have that playing experience? Because a lot of let, let's be real. I was talking with a, a coach last week who came up to me and said, you were right about what you presented. And I was presenting on, on accolades 
and what accolades are valued by different people. And he said, I, I had all this coaching experience, et cetera, et cetera. And I, I wouldn't get the time of day from parents and athletes. But as soon as I told them I was a scholarship athlete at a D1 program, all of a sudden I had credibility. And he said, of course, that's the complete last thing I would expect them to value is that I was an athlete, but it was what they valued. Do you have that challenge knowing that you don't have that playing experience? Therefore, well, he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I mean, uh, at first, I, I feel that's a challenge that every coach that has to overcome at some point, because a lot of these coaches or a lot of these athletes, they look at a coach and they expect their they expect their coach to be a mirror of them. But mm. eventually, once you build those relationships and those students realize that you're you're there for them, you're there because you want to help them prosper. And that just because you couldn't play, you still have something else to provide to the table. And, and again, with my experience, I can tell these guys that, listen, I understand where you're coming from. I've been there. But fortunately, you have an opportunity to grow from this and you can get better from this and potentially go play pro. Or if you don't, you can do whatever you want because you have this great experience and every employer is going to look at you and want to hire you because they can depend on you because you're a college athlete. And so you have so many opportunities. And I feel like that if they don't have a coach in their corner and they don't realize that, then it, that challenges are going to still persist. And of course, it's just never going to be the same. And at the same token, though, there are some coaches that played and but that's it. They never really coached or had the opportunity to coach too much. And so they're very limited in what they can offer. And so I feel it's good to have a staff with coaches who have played at high levels and those coaches who haven't that have experiences, you know, within education, because it helps diversify your staff. I was speaking with an assistant coach a while back in a collegiate program, and he told me how hard it was to find volunteer coaches. He said, volunteer coaches aren't really volunteer coaches. They want something in return. And so most people won't come and do something for free. I remember a year ago or about a year ago, we had a conversation about this very fact and you were working full time in a school system. You were coaching, but you wanted to go to the collegiate level and you you took a gamble and you became a volunteer coach. Talk a little bit about why you did that. Well, uh, it's 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 just funny how things work out. You know, it's always a dream of mine to coach at the collegiate level. and It was really a goal, but. I wanted to be able to do that just so I can prove to other people that I did it, but I was ready for that challenge. You know, I, I, I instructed K through 12 and I could coach at that level for seven years. And at the time I was at a high school and for ethical reasons, I knew I was not going to come back and I needed an internship. And, and so I really took a lot of reflection and thought deep about it and realized, well, now is the time to seize that opportunity and try to achieve that goal. And it just worked out that I was able to find a program that was willing to take me on. And it was a gamble. Yes, it was. But it, it, the dividends really paid off simply because I knew I knew that I would build great connections with the coaches, the athletes. It would help me grow as an individual, and as a coach and just being away from home, being in an atmosphere that was different from what I was used to. So really. I did it because I wanted to get out of my comfort zone and I wanted to try something different because I knew that th this was going to pay off in some way, whether it was me getting a job down the road at the university I'm at or being able to just continue to build relationships with, with guys or just to grow as an, as an individual. And really that was my biggest goal was just to uh, just to grow and just figure out any way that I can become a better individual and a better coach. All right. But something in that paragraph of information, you said for ethical reasons, I knew I wasn't coming back. Mm -hmm. I got to prod you on that. What, what are you talking about? Well, the high school I was coaching at and teaching at, um, I just knew that there's a lot of, re like I was coaching at football. I was coaching track at the time and I was teaching, but just so many different things that were happening in the classroom that the administration or within the coaching it just was going against my my morals and my my values as a coach. And I just I knew that I was not going to grow 
and I was going to be miserable if I continued to stay here and it was not going to benefit me. And it was going to do a disservice to the student athletes because if I was in a place where I couldn't prosper and couldn't grow, therefore I wouldn't be able to help them out. And so it was just best for me to get out of that situation and just try to find a place where I could continue to that align with my goals and just with the, the per person that I am. Yeah, I, I'm cautious to ask you for examples just because we don't want to, you know, identify people and so on. So I, I'm not going to do that. The There are differences between coaching high school and coaching college. And now that you've come through a full season of football, uh, I'm curious what you think are the primary differences between coaching at those two different levels. Well, that's a great question. There are a lot of differences Uh some of the biggest differences at the collegiate level is you have a lot of a lot of these. They're in a transitional period because where they just came from high school and a lot of these guys are about to go into adulthood. So they're struggling in that aspect of how do you approach them? How do you coach them? And so figuring out how to coach them is a, is a difference. Whereas with high school, they're still like like I said, they're still at the high school level. They're still um, adolescent. And so it's a lot easier to guide them more so than it is at the collegiate level. Some of the other issues that you have at the collegiate level is a lot of these, they're, they're 18 to 24 year olds. And so there's a lot of autonomy attached to that. And so having to ensure that they go to class, making sure they stay out of trouble, some of that stuff can be out of, out of your hands. And so being able to keep tabs on them, it can be difficult at times. But honestly, for me, another thing too, is just the, the time that you have, the, that's probably the biggest difference is the time that you have at the collegiate level. Cause you could at the high school level, you spend how much time you feel you need to, of course you go to your, your practices and for some coaching staff, that's it. But when you get to the collegiate level, it's, you know, you're working 12 to 20 hour plus days just between practices, um, meetings, your, your obligations you have with your student athletes outside of practice just the different stuff you have to do after practice, you know, with breakdown, uh, opponent study. So that's probably the biggest difference in high school and collegiate is the hours you put in. All right, we're going to take a little break here. We're just going to share a little bit about FSU Coach, and we'll be back in just one minute. The mission of FSU Coach is to prepare and equip the next generation of coaches and sports professionals with best practices and current research to enable them to pursue excellence. We have two academic programs, the online graduate certificate, which is four classes, and also a 10 class master's in athletic coaching. Our graduate certificate and master's program can be started at any time, either the, the summer, fall, or spring. All of our classes have the word coach or coaching in them and they're taught by coaches for coaches. The types of classes that we offer focus on the athlete as a whole person. We focus on the theory and practice, the research, the helping skills, uh, even some of the mental performance behind you know, what it goes into being an athlete. I came to FSU Coach because I truly believed in the mission and the purpose of the program. I think I have my dream job being a head coach at Florida State, but I know there's always more ways that I can help my athletes and better prepare as a coach, so I thought joining this master's program would help me um, learn different ways to uh, attack my job. If you're interested in going into coaching or joining the FSU Coach program, I would just say don't even think about it and do it. All right, we're back, Tim Baggers, Gunnar Gartner. We're talking about Gunnar's experiences in high school and college coaching. Gunnar, you were a volunteer coach this past fall. You, within a football program, you have many coaches, uh, many graduate assistants, assistant coaches, associate coaches, the head coach. How did you fit into that scheme as a volunteer coach? How did you make sure that your, your role was, was relevant and respected? Well, that's a great question. When I first came into the to the, the program, I, I told I was well. First of all, I want to say that I'm very grateful for the opportunity to work with the Troy University football team. And if it wasn't for Coach Summerall and really Coach Craddock, Joe Craddock, the offensive coordinator, if it wasn't for the two of them, I, I and then they took a chance on me to come up there. And and I told them I said, if I'm a part of your program, I'm going to work my tail off 
because my, my work ethic is something I pride myself on. I'm going to work my tail off to show, prove you that I'm worthy of being here. And being a volunteer, you know, of course, you co my first week I was a little hesitant because, you know, it's new to me. But I, I learned the playbook the first couple weeks. But then eventually they paired me up with an, assist uh, with an assistant coach, Coach Brock Hayes, the running backs coach. So I was his assistant. But also I helped out the entire offensive staff. And so really, I just found any way that I could be helpful. You know, if, if Coach Hayes didn't mean, need me, I'd make sure that whatever Coach Traddick needed, if I could help him out, I would do. Um, coach McKissick, their tight ends coach, if there's anything he needed, I would help him out as well. Um, Rep, coach Rick Kirk, one of our GAs, uh, I worked really closely with him. Um, I helped him out a lot before practice, during practice, after practice. So really, I just found myself busy with all these different coaches because – I realized that it took all of us to be successful within the program. And if, I, if there was a need that I saw that I could do, I would go to them and do it. A lot of times I would just, like I said, if there's a need that I saw needed to be done, I would do it without asking because I just wanted to show my, my worth and my work ethic. And so it's very intricate and you just have to be able to find ways to just, like I said, show your worth and being able to identify that is really crucial. What have you learned over the last season? Oh, I, I learned so much. Uh, honestly, one thing that I learned is relationships are huge. Just with your student athletes, especially, you know, I say that that's crucial at every level. But I really learned that at this level because a lot of these guys, especially when they get to this level, that sometimes they get left adrift. And sometimes it's important just to make sure that you reel them in and just have a conversation with them just to let them know that you're there. And, and and that you're there for anything that they need because they may be hesitant to ask some of their coaches or their professors for something because they feel like that because they're a student athlete, they're put on a pedestal. So therefore they can't really get that that one-on-one -on -one or they're afraid, they're hesitant to ask for it. Um, I learned that it's very important to be a part of a program and just be, be flexible because we had such a great year and I personally feel like if, if I hadn't been flexible and some of the other coaches have not been flexible, that we couldn't be able to had to been successful as we were. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, the list can just go on and on of the things I learned. Um, and it's funny because, you know, I was very fortunate to be a part of the FSU coach program and all the different classes that we offered. I found my, I found myself throughout the season, just pulling things from each course that I was able to apply. You know, for instance, we had an international students course where we had to figure out the best ways to deal with international students and how to handle them appropriately. And when I came to Troy, I was able to establish relationships with international students simply because I had the tools to be able to relate to them or had the tools to know how to cons the, con the considerations to be able to handle them properly. And so, like I said, the list just goes on and on. And I, I can't even name all the different ways and all the different things that I learned this semester. Okay, let's talk about the Masters. I'm I'm curious why you enrolled in the first place. What motivated you to enroll, given that master's degrees aren't cheap, they don't necessarily guarantee a promotion, they don't necessarily guarantee a raise, and the, the I would say the vast, vast majority of our students in our program are individuals like you who, who just want to get better and are willing to invest in themselves. So, So what was it that made you decide I, I'm going to go do this? Well, again, it was an other, another goal of mine was to get a master's degree and pursue a master's degree. And after my undergrad, I was looking at different programs. You know, my, my undergrads, act, my degree is actually in public safety and security. Mm -hmm. And so I was looking at different degree fields. I um, was looking at criminal justice, criminology, education. And so I was looking at different universities, but then just – it's just weird how it just happened. Like just FSU coach just knew, just came up really in my search and I, I started reading more about it and I was intrigued and, and I, I called you and I just, after my conversation with you, I realized that this is the program for me, that this has got my name written all over it. This is what I need to do because I want to get better. And I'm at the time I was a coach. I was a, I was a teacher and I was like, this is perfect. So mm -hmm. I just, need to get on this program. Now, 
before before we had this kind of, before we went on air, I should say, we we had a discussion and you said, how long do I have? I've got a lot to say. <laughs> Which means that I haven't necessarily asked you the right questions. <laughs> so what is it that you want to say that I should be asking questions about? Um, <laughs> that's a great question. <laughs> um, just basically that uh, this program, I, I feel that without this program, I would not be where I'm at in my career. The, the guidance and the leadership from you and, and Dr. Bunning, uh, honestly, just, just really got me out of my shell and, mm. you know, getting out of my comfort zone, learning how to be comfortable is a good thing. Uncomfortable is a good thing. And taking the, a leap of faith to come up to Troy, do the internship with the program and, you know, leave my a, a job behind and pursue a, a, a finish pursuing a degree while coaching unpaid for however long it would be, you know, really. And, and then throughout the internship, still being able to rely on you and, and Dr. Bunning, you know, it's just I'm truly grateful for for the program itself. And and I feel like that this is a program for any coach that wants to get better, not just for them themselves, but more importantly, be able to handle their student athletes because there comes a point in every coach's career where they may feel like that they get complacent or they don't know how to handle their athletes. And for me going through these courses, it's interesting because, because it seems like every course that I had, I was able to align with something that was going through going on and throughout, throughout my career that would help me. And same was true with the internship. And and with, like I said, without the program, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. And I'm truly indebted to the program and for you and Dr. Bunning. Well, uh, thank you. I know on behalf of Dr. Bunning and myself, we, we appreciate it. And we love having students like you. I'm curious, you have 10 classes in the master's. What was your favorite? That's, uh, <laughs> um, I, I like the theory and, and practice of, of co theory and practice of coaching. That was good. Um, Honestly, I liked all of them, too, but yeah, just, but you got to choose just, one, right? Just to pick one is, is tough, honestly. Um, the sociology of sport just was another good one. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy that one myself. Thinking now about you and your career, you've been in high school. You were in high school for for a number of years, seven years, right? And and now you're you're finding yourself in college. What advice do you have for people? I, because I get a, a fair number of, of inquiries about our program. Hey, Dr. Baggers, um, I'm, I'm a high school coach. Uh, I'd love to be a college coach one day. Is this the program for me? And I'm not asking you to, to answer that question. Right? That's my job. Mm -hmm. But how do you what do you what advice do you give somebody who is in that position of co a high school coach maybe a club coach who actually wants to go to a collegiate level coaching career recognizing that that's something you've made the leap what do they need to know what advice would you like to give them well one thing that i would say is if you real if this is a, if that's a goal that you want you need to be persistent about it and persistence is key and it's funny because I reached out to several coaches before I was able to come up here. And one of the coaches that I reached out to and actually was shocked to hear back from him was the head coach at Northwestern. Um, I got an email one day that he wanted to schedule a phone call with me and that, that floored me. And, and I actually spoke with the, co the, with co the coach on the phone. We had a good 15 minute conversation. And one of the biggest things he told me was there's a fine line between being persistent and being a pain in the butt. And I need to find that line. And so I, I did just that. And I was very persistent. I reached out to several coaches in, in Florida, Alabama, and Georgia, and a few reached back, but yet none of them were, were really truly interested in, in, in me, or at least I didn't feel they were. But when I reached out to, to Troy, I, I reached out a few times. I sent, um, I did this to all these all the coaches where I sent out a letter attached with my resume, uh, references, uh, recommendation letters. I sent all that in a package to so many coaches, and I sent that to Coach Summerall, and 
I didn't hear anything, but maybe like a couple of weeks later, I get a text from from the coach that's responsible for my recruiting area in Bay County just to establish a relationship. And every time I would text him, he would text me back and vice versa. And we just we built that relationship. Um, I came up to Troy and I just knew that this is where I, I meant, was meant to be. And we, we spoke and he took a chance on me. And just again, if I wasn't persistent, I knew that I couldn't do any of this. And another thing too is is being, being willing to take that leap of faith. If you have a gut feeling that this is the right opportunity for you, do it. And and also, as I mentioned with Troy, is I wanted to go to a place where I, I felt like I belonged. And when I s- toured the facilities and just saw that the they had their core values, you know, attitude, toughness, discipline, love, those are four things that I truly pride myself on being a coach and just getting to know Coach Summerall, I knew that this is where I need to be. And he surrounded himself with great men. And I was like, I need to be around these men because they can help me guide me to become a better man myself. And that's mm-hmm. really what I wanted. And so again, just persistence and finding your fit and for in the right, the right place. Those are probably the, my two biggest keys of advice. Mm-hmm. That's great advice. If I know you're active on social media, if somebody wants to get in touch with you, maybe make that connection with you. What's the best way for them to get in touch? Yeah, Twitter. You can always reach me on Twitter. Um, DM me or follow me. I'm always quick to respond. And so my Twitter is uh, at Gun Gartner, which is G-U-N-G-A-R-T-N-E-R. So you can always reach me on Twitter. Um, and there's my email as well that you can reach me as Gartner170 at yahoo.com, uh, G-A-R-T-N-E-R-170 at Y-A-H. O-O.com. All right. Well, Gunnar, thank you so much for joining me and sharing a little bit about your experiences. Great to have an update from you. And I'm so excited to, to see where you are next year <laughs> and the year after. Uh, just a reminder, everybody, uh, coming up this June, I know Gunnar's going to be here, right, Gunnar? Yeah. We've got a coaching clinic at FSU. It is called the Coaches Clinic, and it's hosted by FSU Coach. It's June 2nd and 3rd. We just confirmed the date, so we're going to have more information coming out about that over the coming months. Already have some speakers lined up. Some of them are FSU Seminole coaches, and then we're also bringing in some people from from outside of the state as well. So hope you join us for that, the Coaches Clinic, February 2nd and February 3rd. All right, that's all we have for today. Hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to like and subscribe wherever you're watching or listening to from. Uh, But on behalf of myself, Tim Baggers, Gunnar Gartner, thanks so much for watching.